Hi. Hi. Hello again. <laughs> Here we are again. <laughs> We're old friends at this point. <laughs> we sure are. I can't wait okay. to um, spend another another good chunk of time chatting with y'all. Same. I left my computer charger at the store. I'm on a retreat for our um, pride organization right now. And I'm like, it's fine. It's fine. I'm at like 40% battery. It will absolutely be fine. But like okay. my anxiety is like, it's fine. It's going to die. It's not, it's not going to die. But I love unless this. we go three hours long, which I would probably be fine with, but I don't think. Yeah. I love living on the edge. It's great. <laughs> right? Danger zone. You start seeing my pace get like wider and wider. It's because like my battery will get down to like 20%, which is still clearly fine, but yeah. Ooh. All right. Excited. Sweet for Erica. Uh, what a good day. <laughs> oh, we know, Ashley. I actually have no idea <laughs> because I have no idea what I'm doing right now. So, you know, it's fine. fine. I was in the green room by myself and I was like, I don't think this is where I'm supposed to be. So I hit live and <laughs> it's yeah. 
we can <laughs> agree. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> I am in an airless room with the windows closed. Because my late. I'd much rather be early than late. Maybe, maybe no more music. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see. Should I chance it? Window open. Probably not. You do need air. Air is nice, air. but. <laughs> yes. But you just never know when when the merengue starts again. <laughs> <laughs> Which normally a fan just, you know, I don't want to interrupt anybody. I'm at an Airbnb right now, and the, the Wi-Fi has been um, <clears throat> not my friend this weekend. So it's just, we're just winning all the technology things today. Where is everyone going? I turned my camera no. off since I felt very awkward. Just leave us sitting out here. I see how it is. It's fine. It's all be awkward together. That's how this works, right? Yeah, I'm just awkward with my camera off because I'm awkward enough without the camera just sitting <laughs> here waiting for six o'clock, so. That's fair. Two minute warning. And then there were two. <laughs> right. I know. Well, the brave ones, that's what we are. <laughs> Hi, you're from DC. All right, I don't want to be a loser anymore. <laughs> I want to, I want to be back in the party. Yes. Okay. Welcome back. Yes. Yeah. Cool here. Peer pressure. Welcome back. <laughs> I, I just had to drink like a liter of water all at once. No one wants to see that. <laughs> or you know, maybe some people do. I shouldn't judge. You never know. The hydro folks are out there. <laughs> hydro philias. Affiliate? It's usually the hydro bros, actually. <laughs> They're really aggressive about the intake of water. Well, mm -hmm. there's a whole like thing on Reddit. It's it's a rabbit hole. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but it's well, that one's fascinating. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna Google it just now. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> aggressively encouraging you to drink water. Just oh, really so my mom. Water. It's just my mom. <laughs> It's my one good it's not special. Yeah. <laughs> that is fantastic. Every time I tell her something's going wrong, she's like, Well, have you tried drinking just like <laughs> all the water in your house mm -hmm. right now? Does not matter what your complaint is in our house. The first thing anybody will say is, Have you drank any water or done any yoga? And you say no to either of those, you get no sympathy. Stubbed your toe? Did you drink yoga. any water? Got a headache? Have you drank any water? This sounds like the dad on my big fat Greek wedding. Try some Windex. Like put some exactly. Windex on it. That's exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> All right. It is officially six o'clock. So we will get started so we can keep the momentum going. I'm very excited. Hello to everybody who's joining us. My name is Nicole. My pronouns are she, her. I own Betty's Pages in Lowell, Michigan. 
Um, and I am incredibly excited to be talking to these five fantastic authors today. So I'm going to let each of you introduce yourself. Um, and we're going to go in order of who you are on my screen. So I don't know if that matches y'all's or not. But Meryl, you are first up on my screen. So lucky you. Hi, uh, I'm Meryl Wolves there. My pronouns are they, them. I am uh, the author of Something to Talk About, which came out in 2020, and Mistakes Were Made, which I have, uh, which comes out October 11th of this year. Um, something to Talk About, when I when that came out, I described myself as a someone who wrote slow burns that where two women took so long to kiss, you, you wanted to fling yourself into the sun, and in Mistakes Were Made, they have sex in the first chapter. So I am large and I contain multitudes, uh, but I'm always writing happily ever afters for queer folks who love women. Fantastic. All right, Timothy, you're next. Hi, everybody. I'm Timothy Janowski. My pronouns are he, him. I am the author of Never Been Kissed um, and the forthcoming You're a Mean One, Matthew Prince. Never Been Kissed was out in May. This is my debut novel. And You're a Mean One, Matthew Prince is my holiday rom-com. Comes out in October. Um, yeah, that's mostly about me. <laughs> that's about me. Um, these are new adult novels and yeah. Delightful, I love it. All right, Chensia, you're next. Hi, I'm Chensia C. Higgins. I am unprepared because I don't have my book. Um, oh no, this is live stream, so you can't even like, I'm sorry. Um, no, I, wrote, <laughs> I wrote Devon and Chris plan a wedding. Um, oh, oh yay! Yeah. <laughs> 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 Teamwork makes the dream work. Yes, thanks, CJ. Um, I wrote Devon and Chris on a wedding, um, which is a um, sapphic black romance about two women who meet on a reality show and they have to convince their families that they're getting married in six weeks. And, you know, things happen and it's really great and lovely and so um i wrote that and i am very excited to be on this panel with all of these amazing authors hey all right tj you're next i'm tj alexander my pronouns are they them uh my debut novel just kiss was out this year in may um a follow-up to that is going to be out next year in probably june and um, I live in New York, and that's that's it. That's kind of it. The end. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and Erica. Hi, I'm Erica Ridley. My pronouns are she, her. I'm delighted to be here. I am the author of The Perks of Loving a Wallflower, uh, which was, um, it's about a super fun family called the Winchesters. It's full of capers and heists and shenanigans, uh, and also lots of sexy times as well. And, um, uh, I don't know if I, <laughs> I'm also not prepared with my own bio, so I don't know if I mentioned I live in Costa Rica, uh, and thank you. Why is it always the hardest thing? As soon as somebody says, tell me about yourself, you're like, I have nothing. I have nothing. There's nothing in my brain right now. Empty. Anything about I haven't met me. I, I don't know. Right? <laughs> also, when people ask, what books should I read? I suddenly I go, what are books? I don't, I don't know what books are. There's... Um, this panel is especially exciting for me being a queer bookseller and owning a bookstore where we focus a lot on having uh, a multitude of stories on the shelf. I want everybody who walks into our store to be able to find themselves on the shelf and also to see experiences or people or things that they wouldn't normally have in their, in their daily life. And having all of you in a panel when I have all of you on the shelf at my store is just incredibly, I'm geeking out just just a, just a smidge. Um, it's very exciting for me personally. When we think about romance and we think about the joy and the happily ever after, I think especially when we're talking about queer romances, that is such a thing that is so important for us to get to see on the page um, because it is not a thing that we've seen in media a lot. So if all of you could just kind of share a little bit, what does it mean to you to be in a space where not only do you have your stories on the shelf, but you're in a panel with multiple authors who are also writing queer stories of joy and that is not a thing many of us probably expected to get to see even five, four years ago. So whoever wants to start, feel free. Or I can pick a person if that's easier. I always vote for picking a person. All so right, then you get to go just, first. The rest of it, we don't just sit here and go, wait, am I supposed to say something? <laughs> it's your turn. It's your turn to go first. <laughs> okay. okay, I'll go first then. Uh, um, yeah, I actually, 
when Something to Talk About came out, it was Berkeley's first uh, queer female romance in print. Um, they had done an ebook, but they had done, not done anything in print. And honestly, just the experience of, and that was just in 2020, um, and the experience of that compared to where I am now and, and everybody who I get to talk to and be on panels with and all of the books that I get to read and sometimes not get to read because I have been very bad at reading lately, but you know, that they, that they're existing at all, honestly, just in the two years that I've been publishing, um, it's changed a lot in a great way. Um, and I, you know, hope that we sort of continue in that direction and that, um, like Chensia, it's great to have you here. I'm, I love that there's, you know, sapphic black romance as well. Um, that it's not just, you know, abled white people, um, who are, who are writing this and whose stories are being told. Um, so yeah, so it means, I mean, it means a ton to me, but it means so much, especially just to have the community, um, because it's not like people haven't been writing romance and queer romance for a very, very long time. Um, but to actually have the community in sort of, you know, traditional pub and finding ways to make sure that, you know, obviously not everyone's going to get the same treatment, but to get everybody, you know, as much space at Barnes and Noble or, you know, marketing space or anything as possible and to shout about everybody as much as possible. It's been really great to, to be growing the community. Mm -hmm. We're just going to go in order then. Timothy, it's your turn. <laughs> I like, um, I well, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, we'll just go. <laughs> okay. Um, I think for me, I, I got most of my happily ever after fix originally in YA fiction. And um, I think the first time I really saw myself in a book was reading um, Becky Albertalli's Simon Verses when I was still in high school. And um, I remember the experience of tweeting Becky and saying, wow, like this is the first time I've ever read a book where someone wasn't talking down to me, but was actually reflecting my experience. And Becky probably does not remember that, but she did respond at the time and tell me how sweet that was. And um, I just feel um, really honored that I get to put like one volume into the world that maybe bridges a gap for someone. Um, and part of the reason I really wanted to write new adult queer fiction and romances specifically is because um, when I was in college, I was really hungry for happily ever afters that weren't um, I didn't feel mature, um, but I, I, I knew I was hungry for something that maybe wasn't YA and, but wasn't, you know, someone who knows how to do their taxes yet. Um, and so I, I really wanted to write a book for the queer folk who don't know how to do, no, please do not ask me, um, still how to do those, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm writing for that crowd who doesn't quite know yet how to do their taxes. So, um, I'm representing those queers it. today. I'm adding that now to my hand selling. If you don't know how to do your taxes, this is the one for you. So. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, don't tell the IRS. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, Jensia. Well, um, it's very exciting for me. Growing up in Southern Texas, there was no queer anything, YA, fiction, literary, romance, any of that. And so, um, when I became like a young adult um, or new adult age, right? When I was in like, like late teens, early twenties, the only little like snippet of queer I could see was just like a, a main female character maybe having a moment in college. And then it was like, yeah, but my happily ever after is gonna come with, you know, a guy. And so it is so um, wonderful to see so many queer books and so many queer authors able to put those books out themselves. Um, and I, I was so excited that Devon and Chris Planet Wedding has been received like the way that it's been received. Um, because that like sapphic black romance, like it's like a big deal. <laughs> I mean, and there there's some amazing sapphic black romance I've read like in the indie sector. And so I'm so glad to be able to be a part of that. Um, and to have readers say that they, you know, they felt seen and that that's the representation that, you know, that that touched them. And it's just like amazing that they're talking about my book <laughs> when they say that. So I love it. That's fantastic. I love that. All right. TJ. Yeah. Um, I think like a lot of people of my 
generation dating myself. <laughs> like I was uh, well into adulthood before like the first time I realized like, oh, I'm in a room for like the first time with just nothing but people who I know are chill. <laughs> like, it took a long time to get to that point um, to, to find a space for, for myself. And when I was writing Chef's Kiss a couple of years ago, there were no um, traditionally published books that I could find still in print that had a non-binary love interest in them. You know, thank goodness we have um, some more uh, of that now, which is great. Um, but yeah, at the time I felt like, eh, I get, I'll throw this out into the ether and see what happens, I guess. Um, but I was really glad that it was, yeah, received the way that it was. And I still get like really sweet messages once in a while on social media from folks who've read it and to say like, you know, this is the first time I've gotten a happy ever after book with someone like me or someone like my partner or someone like a couple like that is like us and that is super cool and means a lot to me um i've gotten a lot of messages from people's like moms <laughs> saying like <laughs> oh okay i get it now like <laughs> i see now um so i just feel like yeah that that's um i could not i probably uh did not have the capacity to imagine that when i was writing this book a couple years ago i honestly thought like maybe i'll force like some friends <laughs> Um, and I did. And now they just happen to be like people paying for it as well. So thanks, friends. <laughs> Fantastic. I think that the the moms especially, that's the beauty of romance is it's such a genre. It's such an easy way to get the moms and the grandmas to be like, oh, I can understand a little bit more now. All right, Erica. Um, like many of you, I, I was an adult before I found books that were what I wanted to read, where that, that spoke to me in this way. I think um, Tipping the Velvet actually was my first by Sarah Waters, if you guys have been first. And, um, and so it, there was still like very, very few for so long that I, I believed that indie publishing was going to be the only way that I would ever be able to publish uh, this kind of book. And I still can hardly believe <laughs> that I actually have a traditionally published deal and that my books are on shelves at Barnes and Noble and grocery stores. I mean, Walmart, Walmart. And I like it blows my mind now. And like you, so many of you are saying, it's it's so amazing to hear people say, you know, they didn't think, you know, historical romance was for them until they saw this cover, you know, things like that. And I'm not the first one to, to write um, sapphic historical romance by, by any stretch of the imagination, but, um, but there are not many of us in the traditional sphere. And I am so delighted to see that changing, that there, the fact that there is a community now when, when before like, there really wasn't, uh, I mean, there are always people, you know, writing, like, like you said, but, uh, but to really have choices on the shelves and, and readers that can have many favorite authors. And, and it's just a really, really amazing direction that we are finally going. Yes, I love that. It's such a, I think you touched on such an interesting part of like building the community. I think you all kind of touched on this. Romance readers and romance writers, it's such a fantastic community, in my opinion, because we want everybody to succeed. We want to see more of us because A, we're all voracious readers and we want all of the stories. So we're like, yes, please give me a million of these. Um, so we're going to go the other direction now. So you just start, Erica. Okay. If you were to give you know, a piece of advice to somebody who was looking to start writing or to start sharing, you know, not anything technical about whatever, but just what's something you would have liked to have heard when you first started writing and starting this process about your stories? Well, maybe not what I would have something that would have made sense when I was starting. But I would say now, like, take take heart. It's possible now. Don't let anybody tell you no. Like, once upon a time, no was very real. You couldn't mm -hmm. get past that wall. That, that wall is broken now. You can find a way. Don't be scared. You can do it. Find your people. They will help you. We, we will all help you. And you can make it happen. TJ? me now okay um yeah like this kind of touches on what erica was saying a little bit i think but when i was first up starting to write i just had like no confidence that it was going to work and you know not a lot of people around were going to give you that confidence i think one of my first writing professors told our class like if you can do anything else for a living please do <laughs> 
And I was like, oh, okay, I better do something else for a living. And that was like, you know, that made me miserable. So um, yeah, I think just, you know, it, it sounds a little pat, but realizing that like everything is going to have to come from yourself in a way, like there's going to be very little um, outside um, validation until you get to the point where like, oh, now, now nice people are messaging me on Instagram. Like until you get to that point, you know, it's going to have to be all on you. And it's nice to get those, the, that, those messages and that kind of validation from, you know, your editor and your agent and things like that. But, you know, it's, it's, there things happen and you're just going to have to carry yourself through, through all of that. So I guess just like, I don't know, fake it till you make it. Cause like other <laughs> it won't. Yeah. Love that. All right. Chancia? I would say, um, don't second guess yourself. Um, yes. It can be really daunting when you're getting ready to start something and everything that you've read, it seems like it's one way. Um, and not negatively, just it seems like, oh, that's the formula. That's what I'm supposed to do. This is how the characters are supposed to meet. Um, and that might not have been the idea that came to you. Don't second guess yourself. Go with what came to you. Write that. Trust that your story is going to be good. It should be something that you love, first off. And then, and then go with that. Mm -hmm. I love that. I think uh, for me, I always would say like write from the heart and the rest will follow um, because writing is not just one thing. It's, it's also a business. It's also a craft. It's a passion. It's a hobby for some, it's, there's a lot, there's too much um, involved in that. And so much of that is external. Um, mm -hmm. But if you always trust your gut and your heart, then, and you believe in your story, then it will find the right format, the right readers, the right audience. And then you get to build a community like this one. So just know that there's always community on the other side. Absolutely. Everyone has said such smart things. I just want to say yes to everything that's yeah. already been said as well. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, it does uh, definitely have to come from from you. You know, you're the you're the only one who sort of can control what you're doing. And like as, as TJ said about, oh, if you can do anything else, do it. I almost feel like. I wish I, anyone had told me the opposite, you know, um, because I was always the kid who was, I was interested in, I was going to be a doctor, I was going to be an actor, I was like all of these things. And it was always, and I'm going to write on the side, obviously, since I'm going to write for my whole life, like that's what I'm going to do. But no one ever was like, hey, maybe you should do the one thing that like has stayed the same for your entire life. Um, and I mean, I don't, you know, obviously, I can't say that I would be where I am or that I would have gotten here sooner or anything like that, if that's what I had done. But I don't know. I, I hope that, I hope that for someone out there that they are told that rather than sort of bumming around doing things they don't care about before realizing like, Oh, okay. I'm going to do the thing that actually matters to me. Um, but another thing that I would want to say to somebody, especially like just starting and this, I don't know, maybe sounds mean, um, but like, you're going to be bad. Like you're, you have to be bad before you're good. Um, and not necessarily just in like, you know, writing bad first drafts, which I certainly do. And I think a lot of people do, um, but also just like writing and it, it's like learning to tie your shoes or playing basketball or literally anything, unless you do it often and a lot, you're not going to get better at it. You're not going to, you know, with like, wait, like with playing a sport, you're not going to learn any tricks and any new things if you don't practice it and do it more and mess those things up over and over and over again <laughs> until you figure out how to do them right. Um, so just, I guess the, my advice would be, you know, don't get down on yourself that you don't, you don't have an agent yet, or you don't have a book deal yet, or you haven't finished a book yet. You just have to sort of keep going and, you know, I don't want to say practice makes perfect because I don't think any of us are ever going to be perfect, but <laughs> But you have to do the put in the work um, to get better. But you will, even if you don't notice it along the way. Absolutely. I think um, so often we are told that we have to be perfect before we do anything and we forget that the steps that it gets there. So if you could go back and tell your younger self anything, what would what would it be that would give them that encouragement to keep going and to not be perfect? And you get to start now because we're going to go the other way. <laughs> um, well, sort of like, like I said, with, you know, 
would love for anyone to have told me like do do the thing you love instead of you know the passing fancy um but i think i think i would have also liked i came into romance sort of sideways um i was definitely you know one of the people who was taught like oh like romance like the dirt you know that's the bad genre that's the trashy genre whatever um and it's not worthwhile and i would definitely tell myself that that's complete bullshit uh if i'm allowed <laughs> to say that on the panel um and just <laughs> yeah so i i instead came in i started writing fan fiction and i was only writing romantic fan fiction but i didn't have that external the thought process of like oh someone has told me this is bad um so that's where i sort of honed my skills and then eventually veered back back into original fiction writing romance um but i feel like I wish that I had just sort of recognized it from a lot earlier on um, that not only can romance, especially queer romance, um, be a revolutionary genre, mm -hmm. but also it doesn't have to be. Not every book has to be like a literary masterpiece. We can literally just write the things that we want to write and the things we want to read. And that's still just as worthwhile. Um, and so, yeah, I guess, I guess that. <laughs> okay. A fish. I, my computer is actually going to die. So I'm going to swap over to my phone, which is going to mess everything up, but I promise I'll fix it in, like very quickly. So I'm really sorry. I feel awful. It's fine. 